Okay, let's do two more epsilon delta definition for proving limits. So the first one is the limit as x approaching 2. And here we have x to the third power. Of course, put the 2 in here, we will just get 2 to the third power. And of course, for that out, we just get 8. And here, <laughs> we are going to prove it. So first, write down PEF. And remember the four keywords, right? Starting with given, given what? Yes, epsilon greater than 0. So that's always the case. Then we are going to say choose delta which we don't know yet just leave it for now and then we'll continue we need this assumption so we will say suppose well here we have x minus 2 in the absolute value and we have to make sure that this is less than delta and then here is the last part that we have to make sure that happens so we are going to check it we check the absolute value of the function minus the limit that we got which we have x to the third power minus 8 and hopefully we can work this out and we get epsilon out of this. Okay, so let's just do some algebra first. This is the difference of two cubes, so we can factor it. And when we factor it, we'll just get x minus two times the absolute value of x squared plus two x plus two squared, which is four. All right, pretty good. And now you see, here we have the x minus two in the absolute value, which we know is less than epsilon. Delta, I mean. So we can replace that with less than delta. And now we just have to figure out what this is, right? Hmm, okay. So you know, we did the quadratic case in the previous video. It's the same thing. So we're just going to go ahead and use this right here and say, let's go ahead and just choose a nice number and say minimum. Of course, let's go ahead and use the easiest number, which is one. Don't use zero, that's defeats the whole purpose. You use one. Because once we say this right here, we can come here and then replace the delta with 1 and then work out this inequality. So we are going to get the absolute value of x minus 2 is going to be less than 1. Open this, we will just get x minus 2 is going to be in between of negative 1 and 1. And uh, perhaps let's just get the x by itself first. So if we just add 2 to everybody, then we will get x is in between of 1 so this is the one right here, one and uh, three. So once we have that, we can say the absolute value of x is less than this bigger number, which is three. All right, so what good does this do? Here's the deal. If you take a look at this part, we have the absolute value of x squared plus two x plus four. And we are going to use the so-called triangle inequality, meaning that if you have this plus that plus that in the absolute value, this right here must be less than or equal to the absolute value of the first, which is the x squared, and then add it with the absolute value of the second, which is the 2x, and then add it with the absolute value of the last one, which is 4. And that's by the triangle inequality. So I'll just say by the triangle. This is not delta. This is also delta, but this is not the delta that you're thinking. This is a triangle, triangle inequality which is a super useful, um, maybe you guys won't like it because sometimes it's not too obvious, but let me tell you, this is a super useful inequality that you just have to keep in mind. All right, next, I'm just going to kind of play around with the absolute value because here we see the absolute value of x squared, we can put a square on the outside. So this is equal to the absolute value of x and then square. And then we can have the two on the outside for the second one. So two times the absolute value of x and then absolute value of your 4 is just 4. Cool. Now, we know absolute value of x is less than 3. So we can come here and say, this right here is less than, I'm going to replace the absolute value of x with 3. And of course, we'll just put it as a square and then continue, add it with 2. Absolute value of x is less than 3. And we have the less than here already. So we multiply by 3, and then we add it with 4. Now, this is the hardest part. Worked out, right? No, just kidding, of course. This and that and that, that should be 9 plus 6, which is 15, and then plus 4 is uh, 19. So on all, this right here is less than 19. So this part, as you can see right here, is less than 19. So I can come here and we have the less than symbol already. So we can just replace this with 19. All right, and in the end, we have to get epsilon. So, what should we choose to be the delta? Well, delta should just be 
epsilon over 19, isn't it? Yes, because that way, once we put it down, you see, when we multiply by this 19, of course, they cancel out very nicely. Alright, so that means, you see, when we put this is equal to that, we'll just come here and say, we will also need epsilon over 19 here, and then we can just close this brace. And uh, because delta is the minimum of this and that, so I'm just going to use, say, less than or equal to. And well done, as pretty as the ones that we did in the previous video. So that's the first example. All right. For this example, the limit as x approaching 2 of 1 over x, you know it. Just put a 2 here so we get 1 half. And now this is the proof. Here we go, p, f, and first we write down, given epsilon greater than 0, and then we'll just say, choose a delta, but we don't know yet, so we'll just leave it, and then we'll continue, we're going to say, suppose, alright, so we want x minus 2, so let me just put absolute value of x minus 2, and then that's in between of 0 and delta, so far so good, and lastly we will have to check the inequality, absolute value, function minus the limit, which is 1 over x minus 1 over 2. And here we go. This right here, we can of course just do some algebra, so we can just multiply this by 2 and 2, and then multiply this by x and x. So all in all, we see this is just going to be absolute value. On the top, we get 2 minus x, and on the bottom, we get the absolute value of 2x. So that's what we have. Now I'm just going to kind of play around with this a little bit. First off, you see that we have 2 minus x in the absolute value. If you really want, you can look at this and then factor out a negative, and then we'll just get x minus 2 like so. And the absolute value of negative of this is just the absolute value of that. So we will just get absolute value of x minus 2. Then that's totally okay. Right? This is equivalent to that. And then I'm going to write multiply by 1 over 2 on the outside, and then the absolute value of x. And the reason we want to do that is because, you see, this right here is exactly less than delta, and that's very nice. And now we just have to find a bound for this. Well, you know we are going to work out some inequality, so we better come here and just write down, let's put down minimum, and then let's go ahead and put down 1. If you put down 27, it's okay, but don't do it. You just have to replace this with 27, but anyway, <laughs> if you want, but anyway. Absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 27, no, I mean 1. <laughs> I'm 1. And then let's just go ahead and open this so when we get negative 1 is, uh, negative 1 and yeah, x minus 2 and all that. And then let's get the x by itself. So let's go ahead and just add 2 to everybody. So far, so good. So we get x is in between of 1 and 3. That means absolute value of x is less than 3. Just like what we got earlier, right? But now, check this out. We want to look at 1 over absolute value of x. Hmm. If I do this right here, if I do 1 over the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we will kind of have to flip the inequality. And this is problem sum because you see, we have the 1 over absolute value of x. We want this to be less than whatever we are going to put down. But right now, you see, this is greater than 1 third. No good. No good. This is not what we want. So what exactly are we going to do? This is the reason why I show you guys the previous example first. Because right here, this is not the time to put down the absolute value. What we have to do is, Go ahead and do the reciprocal of everybody here, and then flip the inequality, and then do the absolute value. And keep in mind, this interval right here is positive, so you know, just go ahead and uh, flip the, just do 1 over 1, and then this will be greater than 1 over x, and then this will be greater than 1 over 3. All right? The reason we do this is because you, now you see we have the absolute, we have the 1 over x being less than 1. So we picked out the bigger number, like the bigger bound. So this right here means absolute value of 1 over x is less than 1. Aha! You see, the absolute value of 1 over x is less than some number. And of course, we can play around 
uh, with this, we can have the absolute value of 1, which is just 1, over the absolute value of x, like so, and then this is less than 1. Yeah, same thing. And of course, we have the 1 over 2. So we can just multiply both sides by 1 over 2, like so. So this means we have 1 over 2 absolute value of x is being less than 1 over 2. Aha! This guy is less than 1 over 2. So we can just come here, and we have the less than symbol already, and we have the 1 over 2. Aha! Now, here is the deal. In the end, we want to end up with our favorite epsilon, and then we can put the box right here, right? So the question is, how should we choose the delta? Well, we know 2 times epsilon will be the choice, because here, when we multiply by 1 half, the 2's cancel out, which is perfect. And we put down 2 epsilon for this, so we come here and then just say we need to have 2 epsilon right here as well. Close that, and then that's the minimum, so we do this again. And they put on the box already, so that means we are done!